Hello, friends. My apologies for being late. I apologize. Isn't my background super pretty, though? Look. So cute. I really like the... I really like that. I, don't, I, can't, I think I want, I want to do something like that in my own room. That would be so nice. Okay. How are y'all doing today? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> what time is the event? We're waiting any time. Yeah, sorry, I was a little bit late today, trying to get things set up, you know? Hi from Pakistan. Hi, Darren. Hello, friends. Hey, girl. Good, you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm actually in Shanghai right now. Has anybody been to Shanghai? Let me know. I'm here for a little bit of a talk, so I'm only here for a couple of days before I go back to Beijing, but... Okay, Shanghai is usually, yeah, isn't that, it's so pretty here, but look outside though, it's kind of dreary today, it's been raining since yesterday, uh, but that's okay, walk in the bund yesterday, it's a bit rainy though. Are your lives always on Saturday nights? They are generally on Saturday nights. I try to make them Saturday nights. Um, If I'm in North America, they become more like Saturday afternoons, like noon. That's why they're called lunch and learns. But, you know, I was like, oh, it's lunch somewhere in the world. Um, Yes. Nope, never been to Shanghai. You should visit sometime. Recommend it. Hello, Ken. Shart Zion salute to you indeed. Alright, so today I wanted to talk about, uh, what did I want to talk about? Who knows these days? Let me see. Uh, let's see, what am I going to talk about today? I literally forgot. <laughs> One sec. I remember when I first started live streaming and I would get so nervous. Like, what if I do something weird? And then I realized now I'm just like, okay. <laughs> I will. Let me see. Mm. Okay, cool. All right, so today I want to talk about top AI skills to learn in 2024. So that's what I want to talk about. And I also wanted to talk about Lonely Octopus, which is launching, um, which has launched. I haven't put them all on social medias yet, but I wanted to do this live stream to talk about it and see if there's anyone interested, answer any questions that anybody is interested in doing in asking so um i figure we can start with the top ai skills to learn and then after that we can talk a little bit about lonely octopus how does that sound or the other way around what do you think that works other way around works as well maybe i'll just kind of give a quick overview of both oh no did my live stream die Shit. Did my stream die? Let me check. I think it died. Is it dead? Okay, I don't know if my stream died. I think it's fine. Okay, well, I'm going to talk. I'm just going to give a brief overview of both, and then we can jump into the AI skills stuff so that is not the right application uh, let me see okay cool 
Okay, so AI skills we're going to be talking about. So I listed out some of the skills as well as some of the tools and kind of different news ways of keeping up and things like that. So we can, what I would like to do is just start off with this list as similar to what we did last time where we talked about how to solve tiny annoying things using AI. Uh, I think we can expand on this list together and then especially on the, like the certain resources. Like I think prompt engineering, like this one, I'm just going to like not like this one is like the number one thing I think you should do, how to interact with chatbots, using AI for daily life, local LMs, like things like that. So I have a bunch of lists here uh, to talk about. We can add on to this. So for Lonely Octopus, very briefly as well. So Lonely Octopus, our tagline is to learn AI and data skills to work on real company projects. So what that means is that if you are part of the cohort, we give you a customized study plan um the study plan is going to be based upon your skill sets what you're interested in what you want to learn and what your ultimate goal is so you're going to learn that study plan for the first six weeks uh you also have like the weekly check-ins with the community and with us as well career planning and you'll be implementing projects um so yeah and there'll be weekly expert tutorials and talks and then after the six weeks you'll be doing a real company project so this is a company it's an actual company it's an actual project um and then we will help you on project selection and we'll give you full support throughout that process so you'll be learning everything and then you get to apply everything for the company project um these projects uh they're usually small to medium-sized company startups uh, and because if you want to go for larger companies, you do have to go through an interview process. But we chose companies that were started by very reputable people like the Meta AI team, consulting, Genentech director, Deloitte consultants, etc. So, yeah. And then after you finish the company projects, you get to learn. Uh, sorry, you get to. OK, if you complete it. So, again, like these are actual company projects. So I can't control um, as much like what it is that you'll be doing except for you know like you got to do it yourself basically with our support but if you do well and you do complete it then you'll get referrals reference letters uh which you can use wherever from these very good people from good companies and you'll also be part of oh you also get a certificate and you'll be part of our network whenever we need certain freelancers where certain people applying for jobs all right i can go into more detail about this but kind of just wanted to give you the spiel um we're applications are going to be open now and we do do it on a first come first serve so we screen applications on a first come first come first serve basis until our slots are filled up so if you want to apply here is the link and i'll pin it in the description you can check it out and then we can talk about it later as well AI skills to work on real company projects apps are open okay cool so i'm just gonna pin that and then we can start our thing pin message okay cool um would you include this doc somewhere oh you can have the doc yeah just just ask me next time because i like forget um where is it? Yeah, because I kind of like forget. But yeah, also you can have it. You can have it. Here. Uh, copy link. There, now you can leave now. Just kidding, don't do that. I mean, you could, but I would rather you not, you not do that. All right, let's make my face smaller as well. My face is massive. And here is a good spot to put my face. And here is. What is. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. What? Why is it? Let me see. 200. Cool. Okay, that took me a while. Okay, I'll put the link as well if you want to look at it. Go ahead. Um, how many slots are there? So we are tentatively looking at around like, I would say approximately 30 to 40 spots in total. Beginner friendly, 
uh there's no prerequisites like we don't judge you based upon where how many things you know so it's okay if you don't know how to code at all we have people coming as software engineers we have people coming not knowing how to code at all as well uh, it's more about we assess people on their ability to learn and be part of the community so your study plan is completely custom towards you should we pay for this yes yes it is a paid program so it's one thousand seven hundred ninety nine dollars which i can go into more detail about for the six-week program for all the learning custom study plan weekly um the weekly lives tutorials everything and the full support for the final company project plus certificate uh, plus referrals of recommendation letters as well as being part of the network and you also have resources lifetime access to all resources including all courses forever so i can go into more detail about that but that's the so it is a paid program yes um is there any reason for 30 to 40. the reason is because we don't want to accept too many people into the program because we want to make sure that we can give you a really good experience from our team so every single okay is it back okay i think i think it's back right let me check okay good we are back <laughs> okay i better stop doing something weird no i'm kidding i wasn't doing anything weird do you feel all entertained now all right what was i before i decided to to be dead on stream okay um you gotta be careful how you say it these days you know they go block your stream okay all right what was i talking about yes ai skills to learn prompt engineering so the first thing that i think every single person should be learning is prompt engineering because if you don't know how to do prompt engineering you cannot do any of the ais so that is why very important like prompt engineering by the way refers to being able to it's, it's basically how do you interact with ai like how do you tell it stuff in such a fashion that it can give you the best results and it can make a huge difference how good depending on how good you are at prompt engineering like you can say something or just like give you a bunch of random shit that doesn't make any sense or incorrect things but then you can also ask it properly like for example tell it to cite its sources tell it to think step by step um tell it to like just using it in a way that is very helpful like for example for writing as well instead of asking chat to teachers like write my essay for me you can start off with thinking about it from an iterative process like step one is to first come up with an outline and then figure out the outline together and then write the paragraphs together does that make sense so there's like a lot of different ways that you can interact with large language models and really just any ai these days using natural language um in such a way that you can get better results as opposed to if you just type some stuff and hope that it gets the answer right so yeah i can't stress this one enough like i literally made um i'll show you so this is part of the lonely octopus courses so i literally made an entire like course with a lot of things that's based upon like how like these are some ways that you can interact with ChatGPT and also other um other AIs, large language models, AIs. I can't talk today. I haven't had my coffee. Um, other AIs out there as well. So I literally have all of these different things. For example, like creating it as a tutor. Here's my friend Ken as well. How do you debug using ChatGPT? Things like that. I would say the most important, like these are all like different ways of interacting it. Um, what I like to, oops, what I like to inter, what I like to emphasize the most is for example um prompting principles like iterative approach to prompting like this is kind of a little quick tip always think about prompting as a like not just like you ask you to something and for it to come back think about it as like a conversation you're having with someone so work with it step by step step by step as opposed to just like directly asking it for stuff anyways so yeah i think this is like super important uh this is prompt engineering this is a course for the lonely octopus there's also courses elsewhere as well there's there's actually quite a few different um prompting courses 
this one is like more specific for learning things quickly especially like technical things uh, but if you look at some of the other courses that are out there usually they're a little bit more general just like how to prompt in general like they're still really helpful um, in terms of learning how to interact with AI so whether whatever it is that you do figure out how to learn prompt engineering first I actually recommend like go watch a YouTube video playlist um, at the very minimum and you will find you have a lot better approaches so you have a lot better interactions with AI does anybody deny me in that sense uh does anybody have any like I don't believe you Tina all right I actually kind of give you an example you know what let's just pull up ChatGPT and I'll give you a little example of some of the things that what I'm talking about like for example if you just straight up go like write me an essay can you guys see yeah, if you just straight up go say something like, um, whoops, let me just kind of reformat this a little bit. Can you, can you see now? Yes, okay. So if you just go, like, say something like, write me an essay about, I'm going to give me a topic. I get, like, literally can't think of a topic. Uh... The history of China during the warring period, during the Three Kingdoms period, I don't know, something like that, and the impact it has had on modern Chinese culture. I don't know, like something like that, right? And it will, you know, one second, while it's writing it, I will go get some water. It's called the Warring States era, actually, in English. Not the Roy, not the Warring Kingdoms, whatever. Whatever that's called. Yeah, I don't know what it's called in English, but I think it's the Warring States. Um. <laughs> Why did the AI go to therapy? Because it had neural network <laughs> Thank you for entertaining each other. Um. Everything I say is random shit that makes no sense. <laughs> well, in that case, I think that's a bigger problem, Spider. I don't think Chat I don't think ChatGPT or any AI can help you with that if you don't make any sense already. Uh, big ask or maybe not. Swins okay, but okay. My point being, like, obviously, maybe it's not going to be like this much of just like I don't know. Yeah, you're probably not going to try to do something like this. But my whole point is that, okay, you tell it to right? This is, like, great and stuff. The three-period pivotal era, blah, blah, blah. This is great. Here's the historical context. The decline of the Han Dynasty set the stage for the emergence of the three kingdoms. Okay, that's great. The turmoil fragmented this empire, paving the way for ambitious leader to cover out the realms like Tao Tao, Liu Bei, and Sun Quan. All these people, right? Like, this is great. And then major events and figures, blah, 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 blah. Like, all these things that culture impact. Like, great. Wonderful. So, this is, like... Honestly, I feel I maybe I should chose another topic because I'm actually not very well versed in the Chinese culture during this era. But for example, like maybe you're like, okay, like this is great, but maybe that's not what you're looking for, right? So instead, what you can start off with was what would be something like, I need um to write an essay about the history of China during the Three Kingdoms period and the impact it has had on modern Chinese culture. This essay is for my, I don't know, Asian history college class and it should be um, 1,000 words. Is that a lot or a little? I don't know. I, I didn't I have a STEM degree, so I don't know. I I don't know what is considered a lot of words for an essay. Um, I don't know. It should be a thousand words, right? Um, I especially am interested in exploring um, how each kingdom, how the legacy of each kingdom, 
lives on in modern China right now. Example, minority culture, etc. Mindsets, whatever, right? Um, let's start with writing an outline, including an introduction to uh, the period introduction of the history between the war the, the three kingdoms and now um historical context of the three kingdoms um major events the historical the context of modern China, whatever, right? Something like that. Um, then what it's going to do, like, you know, you're being a lot more specific. And instead of just saying, like, write me a freaking essay, um, it'll start off with an actual outline first. And it, because you give it the context of what it is, how many words it should be, then you're going to get much better results. Like introduction, historical context, the context of modern China, major events and their impact, legacy of each kingdom in modern China, influence and minority culture, modern mindset and national identity. Sure. Sure, why not? So what you're going to do after that, right? Instead of just straight up, again, like just straight up being like, okay, write it now. What you can do is that you can ask it to change like, oh, like in paragraph three, second bullet point, can we actually change it to this? Can we expand upon certain things? So this is a really great way of structuring this essay. Like maybe like for me, like I didn't think of talking about the modern mindsets and national identity where like, maybe I didn't know about like the literature are in popular media. So it's really helpful for giving ideas. And then within this framework that you're given, you can then ask it to expand upon it, start, do certain things. And then it's, you can start asking it to write, write things like paragraph by paragraph, like bullet point, bullet point. Don't come and get me if your teacher tells you like, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I'm not your teacher. So I'm not going to tell you like, oh, like don't use chat GPT, but like, I, I personally, I would do this and I would actually end up changing a lot of the wording, like tone of, of what's being written quite a lot afterwards. But this makes it so much faster to write stuff. Does that make sense to everyone? Maybe I'll put my face on this side, actually. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, does that make sense to everyone? Like what it is that I'm doing here? A thousand is not a lot. Two thousand, that's like a lot of words. Holy shit. Really? You're supposed to write two thousand words? of stuff cow essay <laughs> i'm sorry i didn't go with a cow essay best way to learn algorithms you mean like just traditional computer science algorithms like data structures and algorithms there's like a lot of courses cs50 excellent resource it's completely free as well um yeah i can like list off a bunch of them cs50 i don't know search on youtube there's a lot of playlists I like Brilliant as well um, for interactive stuff. Uh, Code Academy is there. Coursera is great. Yeah, there's a lot. Just, I would say data structure and algorithms. There's a lot of different courses that you can do for it. Too much history. Can I ask ChatGPT to change the tone? Yeah, absolutely. You can go like change the tone. What you can also do, um, what I've done before, is that you can actually attach certain things like let me show you for example like you, you can like attach certain files right so for example i could do something like um maybe i want the file uh like i'm trying to find like a sample piece of writing that i've done in the past i feel like i don't really like write that much <laughs> like where have i written something uh okay anyways I don't know if I have like a piece of writing right now. Okay, anyways, what you can do is you can go here and attach like a certain PDF to it and went like um, use the same tone as as this method. You know what? Like here, here's a good example. Let's let's kind of do something really outrageous. So um, let's. I think I have like meditations. No, no, sorry. What's what's that called again? Oh, meditations. Uh, shoot, what was that called? Guys, help me out. What's, what's my favorite book on personal finance? 
my god, I literally forgot the name. Oh my god, so embarrassing. The Richest Man Babylon. The Richest Man in Babylon. So this is one of my favorite books out there, um, like ever, for personal finance. Highly recommend it. It's also free. So let me the way that it's written so let me kind of show you the writing style of this so let me see okay yes so this is the like this is the book right the richest man in babylon and then the writing style is going to be blah 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 public domain okay whatever this is ah yes okay so this is the writing style, like Banzer, the chariot builder of Babylon, was thoroughly discouraged. From a seat upon the low wall surrounding his property, he gazed sadly at his simple home, right? So this is the style maybe that we're we're going for. So what you can do, and you know, obviously you should probably like use your use your own writing style. That would probably be really helpful. Um, but you could do something like but just like copy paste that here and then be like, can you, um, can you write the introduction based on the bullet points in your outline? This looks great. Can you, uh, in the tone of the attached PDF? Hopefully this works. So it's gonna read the document and then we cross the finger bit. I hope it works. Do Shakespeare. Which is thank you. Yeah, so what's my favorite book in personal finance? Thank you, Gabe. You know me better than I do. <laughs> what's the best way to input sources? Oh great. That's a great question. So yeah, I I'll I'll, I'll like show that after this part. What you can do, um, oops, yeah, I should have actually done that earlier. What you can do as well, um, is that you can say cite cite your sources for everything. So for each bullet point that's being written, just literally write cite your sources, and you can write cite your sources from certain websites where like certain certain like primary sources such as X Y Z different journals where you know search on PubMed for example. You can do it like that. So for everything that it's being outputted, um. You can just go and make sure like double check that it actually makes sense and the source is credible or not so okay yeah sorry like i go through that in my course like the exact step process when you want to write an essay for example or like learn how to certain things that you're coding um but yeah that's the process write an outline make sure you cite the sources or whatever bullet point it is that is there actually makes sense and then you can start writing things down like bullet point by bullet point paragraph by paragraph did it work? Okay, so drawing inspiration from George. A little bit bigger for you guys. George S. Classens, Classens, Classens. Um, engaging and instructive style writing style is the richest man in Babylon. Uh, so in the grand tapestry of history, few epochs stand as vividly in the collective consciousness as China's Three Kingdom period, much like the parables of Babylon, that transcended time to impart wisdom on prosperity and prudence. The tales of Wei Shu and Wu Kingdom offer more than just a chronicle of battles and conquests. Sure. So I feel like in this case, it's kind of drawing references from Babylon, so you probably wanted to like be more specific. Um, instead of writing just like not draw inspiration, but the tone of the wording, you can say something like that, right? So you kind of slowly do that. Does that make sense? I'm not going to go through that because we got a lot of other things to go through. Um, but that's kind of things that you can do to make your writing better. And you can also, I don't know, you want to like make articles. You can just do stuff like draw me a picture of, uh, What should I draw a picture of? What is it to draw a picture of? Of a D3. Something like that. 
Does that help with avoiding hallucinations? Yeah, so if you tell to cited sources, it really helps with, with reducing hallucinations. And then if it's certain things, you can also try to break it down into steps. So instead of just writing something like straight up, like um, write me this essay, like if you break it down into steps, it's able to reduce hallucinations and you can double check on what it is that it's drawing information from to make sure it's not like making stuff up. According to your Goodreads profile, your favorite book is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Do I have a Goodreads profile? I didn't even know that. Thank you for telling me that. I do quite like that book. Um, anyways, so yeah, draw me a picture of the Three Kingdoms. Like, I don't know what this is, but there's certain these are things that you can do. Just if you know how to do prompt engineering, then you can do cool things like that. And this really goes for any other natural language based prompting of AI, wherever it is that you're doing it. Even when you're using like APIs and stuff, um, to build your AI products, prompt engineering is also really important. For example, it's actually could be it's probably even more important, I would say, um, because it's more important to get reproducible um, results. And then there's certain things like, for example, if you're trying to build a product and you're trying something from the API, right? You probably want that to be formatted not as just text being written, but you maybe you want that as a JSON format. Maybe you want that as a table, like as a CSV. So being able to figure out what it is that your results should be, um, then kind of figuring out how to prompt it. This is definitely a skill set in itself. Make sense? All right, I'm gonna move on. I spent way too long on that, but it is very important, I must say. Okay, let me move, whoops, let me move my face a little bit more, whoops, to this side of things. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to skip this part, but basically this is how, there's a lot of chatbots that you can interact with, um, which prompt engineering is a big part, so you should definitely try these out. So I think this one... Uh, a bummer because this one i looks really cool it's from nvidia like chat with rtx you can do stuff um locally so you're able to like, put in these pdfs and things like that locally so for privacy purposes and it's also able to go through youtube videos and like grab information from that which is really cool and ChatGPT does not currently have that functionality unfortunately it's only available on windows so it is free as well so if anybody who has a windows um computer do check it out and let me know what you think about it Unfortunately, I do not. So I have not been able to use it. I could just spin up uh, a virtual machine. Just maybe I should do that. But I haven't checked it out yet. Anyways, so the next thing I want to talk about is how to use AI for common tasks in daily life. I feel like this is something that um, maybe like a lot of content creators where like just people in general don't really talk about as much because I think like obviously there's a lot of news that's coming out and it's very cool, very good and, and excellent. Um, but I think a lot of people just like see it and like, oh, that's nice. But they don't really learn how to use it and actually make their lives better outside of it just being like a cool thing to do. So I think if you're going through your daily life uh, and if you think about certain things you can do, you can actually use AI to improve your process, like improve your life, make you much more productive. I think a lot happy as well so this takes a little bit more effort because you're going through and actually using these things um yeah but it's quite unfortunate i think people don't really talk about actually how to use these practically as much of just like saying that it's cool um anyways so please put in a in the chat as well like what examples you have for this i just put one for now so it doesn't take forever uh, i would say microsoft copilot is really worth it in my opinion i think it's like is it $20 per month? Something like that? Is it $18.20? I forget um, how much it is, but I, I personally think it's super worth it. Like you have your normal um, interaction AI companion is like not very interesting, but what is very interesting um, is that it's also integrated into all of your Microsoft 360, Microsoft 360 products like um, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, Teams, like things like that. Uh, so it's actually integrated into all of those as well. So let me give you an example of what we can start off with, like, say, PowerPoint, right? Um, let me see. Yeah. 
It is loading. One sec, sorry. Mm. Okay, yeah, so we'll start off with um, PowerPoint. Okay, so you have PowerPoint, you know, your PowerPoint stuff here. So there's Microsoft Copilot, um, which is hidden over here, like the little thing over here, you can click it. And you're able to use it to create presentations and do stuff. So let's say like create a presentation on, should we create a presentation on? Let me move my face uh okay why don't we get yeah, like on the richest man in babylon right like something like that for example um can you put on the book richest man in babylon with each slide representing one of the rules Including, including what? Including an introduction in each slide, something like that, right? So while it's thinking, it's a little bit bigger. Okay, while I was doing that, I'm also going to show you Excel. Just kind of do, oh, okay, never mind, just kidding. I finished the whole thing. Um, okay, so yeah, Rich's Man about Babylon, like, it's honestly pretty good. So, okay, The Rich's Man in Babylon. I, I assume that this is a Babylonian hand. Start thy purse to fattening. Pay yourself first. Save at least 10% of your income. Put your savings to work. That is correct. Control thy expenditures. Live within your means. Also, guys, I guess we're having a personal finance <laughs> crash course right now. Differentiate between wants and needs. Focus on long-term goals. Make thy gold multiply. Guard thy treasures from loss. Make of thy dwelling a profitable investment. Ensure a future income. Um, was there only... Was there more? Let me just double check. I actually forgot how many. I want to see how good it is. Richest man in Babylon rules. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there should be seven. I think it might be missing one of them, which is increased thy ability to earn. Is it there? Ensure future. Yeah, I think that's missing one of them. Oh no. Okay, never mind. Just kidding. It actually does have all of them. I think. No, it is just kidding. It is missing one of them. Does anybody know which one it is? Okay, start thy first, control thy expenditures. Make thy goal multiply, guard thy treasure from loss, own thy own. Yeah, I think it's ensure future income. Okay, I combined these two together. Make make of thy dwelling a profitable investment. So the first one is to own thy own home, and then there's increase thy ability to earn yeah so it, it did it didn't miss out a little bit so it's okay but you can see like how this is a very powerful start oh and it also gives you like show notes as well so it literally like gives you this information so you can just work with copilot and then be like you missed the rule on 
what is it that I missed? Um, increase. Okay, yeah. Like you can just do that. Isn't that really cool? And it also takes care of the design aspects and things for you. Can you change the word? Yeah, you can ask you to change the slides as well. Like you can be like, uh, add a slide about where like change the slide, change like this part. So you can change all of this. Mm. So you can just say like add a slide about. Um. Yeah. Any other questions? Multiply gold by putting lead in a react by putting lead lead in a reactor. I do not believe that is one of them. Sora made full length movies in the next few months. I don't know. I honestly won't even be surprised at this point. To be honest, like I don't even know what's happening anymore. The ridiculous speed of development of AI. This is why you all have to pay attention and use these things. Um, Gobi, this only works if you have Microsoft 365. Yes, so Copilot is integrated into Microsoft. I don't think Google has a version yet, but I'm pretty sure Google will at some point. Google's just kind of like a bit slower than everybody else these days um but yeah i don't think so this is only for microsoft products um okay cool so yeah uh as you can see you can imagine i'm gonna go into too much about this but you can imagine there's a lot oh increase the ability to learn so yeah it also in does that you can like move it around and you can also just ask it to change stuff on the slides so i really like this powerpoint thing because i'm yeah, this has helped me make PowerPoints so much faster. And people are like, wow, Tina, your PowerPoint looks so good. I'm like, yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, the feature that it is missing, which hopefully they have, is they don't currently have the ability of making charts and doing like smart art and stuff like that. But I'm sure that within the span of the next few weeks, probably, then it would have that as well. Um, on Excel too. So yeah actually you know what i'm not gonna go through this because we have so much other stuff to do it but copilot is integrated into excel as well so excel docs meets all the google sorry all of the <gasps> google all of the microsoft 360 stuff 365 360 i forgot which it was um so you can check that out excel i would say it's also pretty good um like if if you're not super confident in using excel you can just prompt it directly and ask it like can you join these tables together can you create a column can you do pivot tables for me so you, need, you don't even need to know like what the functions are it will actually just do the functions for you it's quite nice okay moving on moving on Let's see where to, where to go where to go pilot okay yes so yeah um i think this is probably one of the most useful things to learn in terms of stuff for common tasks for daily life let me know if you have any more that i can like stick these on as well um okay so but next one i want to talk about is local large language models like local lms and just like actually other models as well so you know you get your good models like uh gpt4 you get like you know your uh gemini's and things like that but those are closed source models um usually you would i really recommend you also check out local uh lms like open source not sorry not local lms in this case i mean call them open source lms so these are things that you can actually download and then run them yourself you can fine tune it you can do things based upon that so hugging face is a great place they have like lots and lots and lots of different types of models that are available um these are a lot of them are more specialized for certain things as well so would really recommend checking out these models there um so it can be a little overwhelming even though they do have like have listings of like what's trending or not it can get a little overwhelming because you're like why is there like so many um oh shit are you able to see oh no you're not one sec i apologize you're looking at are you looking at the right thing what is happening hugging face uh 
uh so here's the presentation and here's hugging face okay just kidding now i think it is good yeah so there's a lot of different hugging face models out there but it can um get a little bit overwhelming just seeing all of them so there's other also if you're trying to like download them there's transformers that you can use there's a lot of different ways of downloading and running it locally um so one of my favorite ways of doing this is through what is called olama olama it's a, it's a llama so you can run the large language model locally um and then it's honestly pretty low code okay so this is the part in which i fucked up because i actually wanted to show you the full installation process of olama but i fucked up so then i deleted everything and then it took so long for it to download and it, it shouldn't take this long to download for you guys it's just because i'm in china so um and then i was trying to like run a vpn while doing a bunch of other stuff so it took a really long time to to run uh to download it and i wasn't able to download it before the stream so i tried to download it during the stream my entire stream would crash unfortunately um but you should really do this it's honestly super easy to do um and in terms of the way that you prompt it it's so easy to do like i would it's not no code but it's very you can like get away with very little code um, to be able to start using these and you can obviously build up on it if you want to do more coding and stuff um, but this is just these are really useful so why is it that you would want to use local LLM so privacy is a really big reason if you don't want to be giving information to these companies uh, or maybe you can't because of some policies you can download them and then you can also uh, then you can upload certain information and since you're running it locally it won't be part of other stuff um it won't be part of the data from other people so you can protect your privacy in that fashion um other benefits will include like fine-tuning it it's a lot easier if you're running it yourself then you can fine-tune it properly um you can also download like specific types of models and then you can basically like do things with it build applications is a lot easier as well it's not necessarily easier sorry it's not necessarily easier but there's a lot more flexibility for what you can do because, for example, if you're using something like the Assistance API from OpenAI or like Completions API, um, which is great, and you can access GPT-4 or GPT-3.5, any of these models, but you're limited to whatever it is that they're providing there. So it's there's less flexibility, I would say. There's less things that you can potentially do by using that as opposed to um, open source models. There's a lot more flexibility and things that you can do as well. So I think if you are someone who's, you don't need to be very technical, but even if you're like a little bit technical where you're interested in building products and things like that, I highly recommend checking out things outside of just like GPT-4, for example, and then start downloading and running some of your local running locally some of your open source models as well that is my spiel so yeah i really oh my god it's so sad i really wanted to show you llama because i'm like people will think llama is really hard to run oh llama but it's really not you can run llama too really really easily um but yes any comments link to google doc please yeah sure no problem is it free yep it is free i think um it's free to start off with i don't i never came up with having to pay for this uh personally i'm not gonna promise that it's completely free from what i can tell as of right now of everything that i've done using it it has been completely free because they're all, all open source yeah I, th I think they are i think it is completely free because why wouldn't it be it's just you're just getting it and running it locally so yeah i think i think it is completely free there you go that's the Olama is easy right it's easy to use and so fun it really is like it's a lot less daunting than doing something like going hugging face and then doing like things from there it's just like super easy to use super easy to switch over like it's pretty genius um how they're doing it yeah there's the link how do you feed the model you can literally just like switch between models super easily yeah okay should I do a tutorial on open source models next time and like actually have it open so it works? <laughs> Should I do that? Is that would that, would anybody like to see that? Um, do you need powerful computer? No, you don't. That's also a really cool thing because like obviously if you're trying to run this with things is going to be 
just like directly just run these models it would have like you need so many gpus to do that but there's really like clever things that people have done in order to run these things locally without having needing a lot of compute so really 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 smart things that they've done yes 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 yeah i would say it's very similar to docker yeah i would agree with that yeah okay cool why not Maybe we can do some sort of thing, like build some sort of application or do some sort of analysis using open source LLMs. I'll be down to do that. Can you like, can y'all like remind me if, if I forget? I, I'm like, try to not forget <laughs> for whatever reason I forget. Can you remind me? Um, if you just put it as a comment after the stream, then I will be reminded. That would be very helpful. Thank you. I'll try to not forget though um right moving on okay so yes damn it okay i'm okay okay another thing so building ai products so this is coming to a point in which you're like oh this is very nice like i'm using these ai things this is wonderful but what if i could build my own things what if i can actually use these apis and these different models and build something that is functional for me maybe you could build it for a company um this skill is in very very high demand right now because everybody's like i want to use large language models i want to use ai for a lot of businesses but then they don't know how to do that so they would very frequently hire people to do this kind of thing where they would hire freelancers and stuff so learning how to build ai products is is a very good skill to to have right so um you can do like you can honestly just start off using open ai apis to pull to use like gpt4 to do stuff dali things like that i honestly think this is the easiest way to start because their documentation is really really good i'll like show you assistance api it's honestly really, really good. Also, given the fact that if you use ChatGPT, um, it's there, it's OpenAI's API, so it's very good at giving you the correct responses to things. So yeah, and then they have like quick start guide. The tutorials are honestly really, really good. Transcription, so it like literally tells you how to do all these things. So I would start with this. Um, there's also the completions API, but yeah, assistance completions, I think OpenAI is the easiest way to start. You do have to pay for this though, but I think it's worth it. I personally think it's really worth it. Um, and then after you use these things, honestly, this is good enough for building most applications. Um, and then you need to start considering things like databases, RAG, things like that. But you know, I'm throwing out some stuff out there to consider, but this is like a great place to start building things. Um, building products. After that, you can delve into your large, your open source large language models, which I said before, there's a lot more things that you can do with it. You can build different products. It's less easy to use. Documentation is not as great, uh, but there's a lot more flexibility and there's it's a lot more powerful <clears throat> if you know how to do it. Right. Um, what else do I have in the stock? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Fine tuning as well. So um, right now, all these models that we're talking about, they're kind of just out of the box models, which which are already excellent. But if you want to get more specific, like you want to do things that are more specialized towards different things, then that's when you start thinking about stuff like fine tuning, which is when you take a model and make it very, very good at doing a specific type of thing. So fine tuning, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. Also, would you guys like, I don't know, like, should I just do a series about how to actually use these models? Um, I can go through like a fine tuning tutorial as well, but I'm not going to go too much because there's like too much to talk about for fine tuning. Uh, you can do that with your models too. Um, and then after you fine tune a model, you can build it into a product, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do there. Um, what's I think like one of the easiest ways that you can start doing this, honestly, is if you think about GPTs, they're essentially kind of mini little agents that you have. So in some ways, I would say this is like the simplest way to start creating little products that's completely no code, um, like cartoonize yourself, right for me, consensus, Canva, image generator, all these things. This is, I think this is a good way to start if you are into, if you don't wanna start coding at all. There's also like other resources that you can use that are pretty no code or low code. With that being said though, I think it is still useful to know how to code. I think it always will be useful to know how to code because only by knowing how to code will you be able to create things that are more flexible and customized. But yeah, you can start off with not coding though. So that, that's fine. 
uh, fine tuning as well. There's like non code fine tuning stuff, which I think is good, but I think it's still worth it to learn how to code and do it in better ways. All right. Let me blah, 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 go do stuff over here. Okay. API is fine tuning. Okay. Yeah. So this is one of the other things like coding assistance. Not going to go into too much detail about this either, but if you haven't already, check out GitHub Pull Highlight, Google Duet. I think I wrote that right. So did I spell that correct? Duet. Yes. Okay. Google Duet um, as well. So these are our coding assistants. This one's from Microsoft. This one's obviously from Google. Um, that can make you code a lot faster. So you, how we were seeing the thing with um, PowerPoint and stuff like that, you know, how you can just generate things in Excel, on Excel as well, like generate uh, certain functions. Just coding assistance like GitHub Copilot and Google Duet makes you code a lot faster. It's able to provide code for you. It's able to fix your problems, like the bugs that you currently have. It's able to get, make suggestions for how to make your code more scalable, you know, things like that. So I think it's very, very helpful. Uh, even if you're starting off to learn how to code, I would say just start using these start using these tools from day one because why not do things in a fashion that is more um that will make you faster and also it'll help you learn a lot faster as well uh yeah so i would say check out the coding assistance too also another thing oh sorry if you are going to be learning um if you're going to be learning how to code i would also stay like figure out how to use ChatGPT or just like ways of prompting, even with like general models like ChatGPT to learn how to code faster. This is something that can make it a lot easier and you can learn things a lot quicker as well. So it's kind of like the meta learning portions. So I go over a lot of that here as well because technical self-study bootcamp, right? So a lot of the examples I go through is using it, like for example, as a personal tutor and things like that, that can make it make you learn a lot faster all right so i'm gonna end off sorry i went a little bit over but i'm gonna end up with talking about news and development um so here's like a few things that i would say i personally look at somebody recommended feedly pro so thank you for that this is a way of getting the information specialized customized towards you so i think it's really important to keep up with news and developments um I kind of get it when people say that it's too overwhelming and it's kind of stressful. Like I kind of agree with that. Um, so it's okay like if you, you can use things that are a little bit more filtered, but I do think it's really important for people, for you, for me, for everybody to keep up with what's happening because I don't know if anybody's going to fight me on this one when people go like, oh, it's not going to affect your life. Yeah, it's going to affect your life. It's already affecting your life. There, there's no way that AI is not going to affect your life and not going to affect your career. So it's intelligent it's smart um there's a lot of opportunities to keep up with the new things that are coming out with that being said i think there's also a lot of buzz that's coming out um in terms of here's a new tool like it's like every single day there's a new tool or a new development every single day is like breaking ai news like best ai news the biggest week of ai news like stuff like that i can see why that's stressful so i would recommend just sticking with a few things that not necessarily has to go into every single tool that's being released but at least like pay attention to the large changes like the large things that are happening like for example gemini comes out right sora which is for video came out from OpenAI. um new models that are coming out developments like these i do think is very important to pay attention to so some of my favorite newsletters are ben's bites this one is like like i would say these newsletters are honestly really good because it doesn't go into too much detail about stuff. Uh, I'll say Alpha Signal is a little bit more technical if you're into that kind of stuff, but Ben's Bytes and the Neuron and the Rundown, like these three, I think are quite good to keep up with. Uh, traditional news as well, if you're into that, Wall Street Journal, The Information Verge, these two kind of get a little bit overwhelming sometimes, and this is not specific, but they have had very nice um, articles covering stuff like that content creators as well so i personally really like ai explained um he goes into ai technology and concepts so instead of just saying like here's a new thing that came out he actually explains like oh like what's the implication of this he reads papers and tells you about it so i really like ai explained matt wolf is also great um he talks a lot about like ai tools he's he's like no code he's not a technical person um i would say i, I think he's really great in terms of the way that he tries things out and is able to present information. I do find that his content does get overwhelming sometimes, 
because it's kind of like every week is like breaking news week. There's like a lot that's coming out. I think he publishes a lot, which if you're into, like definitely if you're into new tools, you should check out his channel. It's absolutely great. But I can also see how it could be a little bit overwhelming um, in that sense. And I think like Wes Roth is kind of more similar to Matt Wolf in the sense that he covers news. Um, but it's like, he, I think he, he like puts a video every day or something like that. I don't know, like every one or two days. I have no idea how these people do that, by the way. Like, I don't know how they're able to put content out so quickly, um, but they do somehow. Uh, David Shapiro, I think, is a great one as well. Um, so he's more less about like talking about the news and the tools that are coming out. He is a lot. He goes a lot deeper. I think he has a lot more technical. He's a lot more technical. He's been doing this for a very long time. He has a book about AI stuff. Um, so he talks about the implications like agi and like things like that generally speaking though wait i'm gonna like show you guys what i mean so no hate like i promise no hate um okay like because i actually do watch these people i would just say like i don't i personally really don't like the thumbnail designs and the way that it's being portrayed um personally but it really some of these are a lot of people a lot of these ai news channels are just scams because they're just trying to get views because AI is, you know, hot and stuff. Um, and that's kind of, it became the general way that this niche showcases its content. I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, again, like for example, David Shapiro, he's absolutely wonderful, but it's just kind of there. It's a little clickbaity feeling like life in 24 AGI within seven months, you know, like things like that. Unfortunately, it kind of just like, is this structure um and then also like wes roth as well but if you actually dive into the content it is actually pretty like these people at least i say they're actually pretty good um yeah it's i feel like it's just the vibes like that's just kind of what it is and then also like matt wolf as well um uh, great content but personally not super into the designs of the thumbnails uh and things like that we've actually clicked into it it's great and he seems like a very nice person so yeah if you can get over the i don't know what it's called the vibes then, then i think i think it's quite good um anyways so oh no i'm sorry i went over so i'm, I'm gonna quickly cover the rest of these a little bit faster so yes um also conferences like ces is one of them where people like showcase a lot of different new tech that's coming out so if you're into that it's cool nvidia gtc is happening in a few weeks i believe so they they actually invited me in person so i'm like very honored about that so if you ever watch this thank you um they gave me a 20 percent link 20 percent off link for anybody that wants to go in person as well but their virtual thing is completely free so you can do that um unless you really want to go in person it's in san jose this year you can also just get it for free yes so i do feel like it can get a little bit overwhelming maybe just start off with one of the newsletters i would say is probably the best to start off with and then just pay attention to one of the conferences like if you're not gonna i think if you're gonna do one thing like go to the nvidia watch some of the nvidia gtc stuff and then just choose one of the newsletters to start off with you know i have been thinking it's like just in terms of content wise i really feel like there's no newsletter there's no content that really covers like how to actually use these things as opposed to more of the ai news stuff so i personally have been playing around with the idea like should i adapt my newsletter or start another newsletter that's more specifically on the usage of ai tools as opposed to just like news but i don't know what do you think any thoughts about that would you read or watch something like that I hate the end is near thumbnails. I know, I know. I agree. Like that the end with near kind of thumbnails, it is irritating. I don't like the style. It makes me feel like I'm being like it's just like the fear inducing thing, but it's just the way it is. Like in that niche, I guess like that's just what they do, unfortunately. Um I love Wes. I do too. I'm not hating, okay? <laughs> I'm not hating on their content. I think their content is great. I'm just saying I don't like the standard of the thumbnails and the titles in the niche. <laughs> I appreciate all of these people too. I promise. Don't go tell don't go telling these people I hate them, okay? I genuinely don't. I respect them a lot. <laughs> um I'm not understanding 
of course seen as best by like all those matt burnham's oh yeah i forgot matt burnham as well yes i agree as well matt burnham too um all these people there are scammy people out there but there's also really really great people that you should definitely follow in the AI niche uh was i oh hi spider oh yes the only person turn on the camera so hi hello yes uh, i'm not a news person i would rewatch your content you're so cool oh thank you <laughs> i like that idea do it should i do it for usage i i mean i, I don't think i would be covering ai news as much because obviously i would cover the news but more about the application of it because news personally myself i kind of get stressed out <laughs> when i see like too much news that's happening uh, why don't you have a Discord? I do have a Discord. It's linked in the in the description. Um. Anyways, okay. I'm gonna put this thing again. Like, I'll put the document link again. Let me know what you think about it. Yay! There you go. I would watch it. Tips for coding as a newbie. I feel like you don't have a programming brain. I have good videos on that. Search my content. I I have lots of videos on how to start coding um remember that thing you asked us to i literally forgot what i asked you to remind me about i told you i can't remember anything <laughs> okay i'm gonna talk about lonely octopus okay so for lonely octopus this is also going to be a q a session um feel free to drop if you're not interested no pressure i'm not gonna be like why are you not stay uh but yeah so i want to talk because lonely octopus just opened its applications so what it is i think i briefly covered this earlier it's about learning ai skills and working on real company projects so what you do is that you get it's like a six it's an eight-week program so you get your personalized study plan that's based upon your experience level some people who know how to code you probably wouldn't take introductory coding classes but some people who don't know how to code at all you would start with introduction to python so it's personalized towards you um and it's also personalized towards what you want to be learning the time that you have like things like that so we have um so we have that study plan that's available for you and you can also tweak it if you like you also have access to career planning and weekly check-ins from our team. So I would like to think of Lonely Octopus not in terms of a product. Okay, it is a product, but I'd like to think about more of a program as opposed to a platform because this program, it's very hands-on and we also, you're, you'll be like constantly interacting with the rest of the community and with us as well. So it's not really like a, you sign on, you learn these courses and you just kind of like do things yourself very community based. Anyways, so you learn from your study plan and then you would apply them to projects. So I'm a big component of a uh, proponent of project based learning. So in my opinion, whatever it is that you're learning, it's not real until you actually do a project on it. So that's why you do a lot of projects um, with the things that you learn. And obviously you'll have support with mentors throughout as well. So if you have any questions, we'll help answer it. We'll also have weekly tutorials and talks. So these are things that you can, if you're interested in particular topics, you can go to these events. Um, for example, if you're interested in how to build Django apps using AI, then you would go to an event like that. If you're interested on AI video, for example, or video AI content creation, there's events for that as well. So you get to choose what it is that you want to do. We do cover um, a lot of different topics so it's also not specifically just for people who want to build ai products and code very hardcore you, we kind of we covered a spectrum and also we serve a lot of different domains as well um okay so after you do that for six weeks then the final two weeks is when you actually apply everything for reals into a company oh my god that wasn't even showing was it was it no it wasn't even showing <laughs> well all of that was wasted effort okay well okay you heard what i was saying so good enough anyway so yeah six weeks so it's going to be six weeks and then after that you get to apply it to a real company project so this is where i think is the one of the best things about this about this program and where we also i spent like a lot of effort on and we all spent a lot of effort on in the team because after you learn everything that learn everything that the company is usually like mid-sized to startup companies um, and they're all started by very reputable people for example Deloitte consultant Genetech director big three consulting veterans and 
this is literally the meta AI team that jumped out and did their own startup. So they're medium to smaller size companies because if obviously if you go to like meta, for example, you have to go through their interview process. But in this way, we're able to work with these startups from people who went to who worked at really big companies or just have very, very reputable people. And you can work you can work directly with them um, in the company. And also you have a lot more access to the people in the company as well so yeah these are some of the projects that we've done in the past as well as the ones that are upcoming so just a small sample of them and you apply all the things that you learn within lonely octopus within your study plan and finish one of these projects if you do well so this is condition on on condition of completion right because they're actual like i can't control the way that um how do i say like i can't just be like oh like everybody gets a certificate everybody gets referrals because it like you know they that company those stakeholders they'll be evaluating throughout the process as well uh, we'll try our best to support you as much as possible so if you just kind of um learn to if you just work with us uh, we'll make sure that you're able to succeed our success rate is 97 percent. so don't worry on that on the company projects but if you're able so if you're able to complete it um, you'll get a certificate an official certificate from us and also from the company that you did the project with you have reference letters and linkedin reviews so these are the referrals um, from that company and from us whenever you need it oftentimes if you're applying for a new job or you're trying to like start a freelancing career or do anything related to AI one of the issues is that people are not going to hire you because you don't have any experience um, because you don't have any experience in that area so this solves for that problem because you'll end up on your resume with an AI project experience like actual work experience and you'll have referrals and reference letters if you choose to use them um, to do whatever it is that you want to do next change your career get another job upskill start a freelance project anything like that and you'd be part of our internal referral program as well so um i told you before that being able to learn like building ai products and just using ai in general it's a very in-demand skill as you can see like how much more productive it can make you so a lot of companies are also interested in hiring talent that has these skills um and there it's in very high demand so part of the referral program is that since we you know, we know who you are by the end of this program and we know your interests, we know your skill levels, then um, the company, some companies will come to us saying, we want somebody who is, I don't know, has like an economics background, who's interested in this kind of thing. And then we would recommend you to that company if we feel like it's a good fit. And then you guys can negotiate what the prices are going to be between that by the way lonely octopus doesn't we don't take a cut in any of this in the referral program for us like it we will help support you if you want to negotiate with them but whatever negotiations you're doing with that company specifically that's going to be between you and the company so even if they hire you outside of lonely octopus like after the program a lot of companies do hire from the people who worked on their projects if they feel like the um the people who work on the projects are good they would a lot of them just hire directly so we'll help facilitate that process and people have gotten jobs from that, but we don't take a cut in that. So just kind of FYI um, in that sense. Yeah, so I'm going to stop here for now and see if anybody has any questions so far. Um, let me actually change my screen as well. Do this. Okay, does anybody have any questions so far about Lonely Octopus? Oh, wait, one more thing. Applications are open, so the program duration for this cohort is going to be from March 23rd until May 18th, and the application deadline is March 8th. So, okay, now let's see if there's anybody that has any questions or thoughts. Um, how are your feet? I'm not going to answer that question. You should do it. Then we can share your content more. Oh, in terms of the newsletter. Okay. I feel encouraged. Or maybe like shorts or something like that. I would be down. Uh, what was the thing that was PC only? Uh, the thing that was PC only was chat with RTX. The NVIDIA thing. Octopus. Very stealthy. Indeed. What is your favorite color? You want to take a wild guess? Is that the new title? Real company project? Yeah, I was asking people previously. Um, like I was like, what should I call these projects, right? What I just explained to you about what the company projects are. I was like, what is the term for that? Because I don't want to say internship because then people, there's like all those scammy internship people, right? Like where you would pay someone, you just pretend to work and then get like some sort of certificate afterwards, like bad connotations there. Um, 
and then I was asking you guys like practicums there was like co-ops that people suggested so I am actually going to start a b testing like which terminology is good for this so i feel like right now like real company project is the best representation because you're working on that project from a real company but you also have a lot of support from us to make sure that everything is done properly so i feel like it's not i don't know that's kind of the term that we ended up with <laughs> real company project let me know if you have any particularly strong opinions about that or if it just like doesn't make any sense that would help too to, to let me know that um, how can I find work for the first time in the programming? What does that mean again? Sorry. What happened to the 3%? 3%, we do have people who unfortunately dropped out. Um, usually, like, something happened in their lives. So I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's their personal lives. Um, the 3% is usually, like, they're like, hey, like, I can't do this anymore because of life event that has happened. Um, we haven't had anybody drop out of the program um, because they weren't able to keep, keep up with the program or because they thought the projects were too hard because since they're very customized and personalized, so we make sure that you're able to complete it. Um, that's also why we don't take that many people, right? Because I want to make sure every single person who comes into this program is handpicked and every single person has that experience of coming out of it feeling like they got they got their money's worth, first of all. They get way more than their money's worth. They have that certificate. They have the things they learn. They feel confident and they have referrals. Uh, how does the payment plan work? Excellent question. Let us go over that now. On the octopus, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So there's two different options available, the Explorer option and a Pioneer. So the Explorer option is 1,799. It covers the personalized study plans, the access to courses and trainings. Um, so all the courses and the trainings, there's no hidden fees. You get access to all of this material and you get lifetime access to it as well. So even if you don't finish all the courses and you, you won't because there's hundreds of them um, that are there and the projects, you can still do that in your own time after the program ends. So we have group study sessions. It's very community based. Um, so it's not just going to be you like sitting there learning things by yourself. You're going to have a group of people that you're going to be checking in on accountability. Um, and you also will be keeping tabs on you the entire time as well. So we'll be available for you to talk to. It's going to be primarily on discourse. Uh, Discord, uh, we have our own private Discord and it's also customized to support this program. Learning projects, priority support. Um, so we have the company projects, certification documentation. So what I was talking about earlier, earlier about the official certificates, uh, personalized reference letters, things like that. The job networks, live seminars and talks tutorials and workshops we also have specific speakers that we bring in um, if you're interested in certain industries like for example if you're interested in art specifically um, i am not the best person to talk about art with but i do we bring in people who are specialized in that so yeah we have a lot of pride in the sense that we get the best of people um, and also the best resources and courses that are out there as well so we put them together into a personalized personalized experience um blah 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 okay yes lifetime access to projects and you have lifetime access to all courses and materials so that's the explorer option for the eight weeks the pioneer option is going to be much pricier so i actually think most people should just go with the explorer option the pioneer the biggest differentiating factor in addition to all the things you get from the explorer is that you get one-on-one -on -one mentorship with me and our specialist team including a mentor career planner curriculum advisor so you still get um, all of this support from the Explorer, but this is like on demand. Like whenever, however much you want to talk to us, whatever it is that you need, we will be there for you on a one-to-one -one basis. And I will personally work with you for your for your custom study plan as well and for choosing your projects, um, direct access to me. And then you also work directly on the projects. So uh, the real company projects, sorry, there's a little bit of typo there and you change that. Um, yeah, so you'll be working with the projects, um, the real company projects, but it would be completely custom towards you. So if you tell me like, oh, I want to make a project specifically on this kind of thing, then I will work with the different companies and then find something that would really fit your taste the most. Obviously, it's still not going to be like, like, you can't make exactly what you want to make because the company has to also find it useful. But we'll go into in length to see what is the most useful for you and your career and which um, project works the best for you. And you have complete mentorship in that. So I would say only go for this if you really, really want to get 
everything you possibly can from this experience and you're using it to um, leverage that to jump into another career like very very quickly I would say um, but I think for most people the explorer option is is the correct option here so payment plans we do have payment plans available so we have two installments for four installments so for both of these you can do two installments um, and then for each of two installments over the period of two months sorry wait two installments two three <laughs> can't think two installments so half and half um it would be bi-weekly and then four installments it's one two three four okay let me get you back on i think okay no it's the two installments would be bi-weekly and then the four installments would be um extending that so within two months so the six weeks you'll have the four installments is that correct yes that's correct Oh my god <laughs> yeah so we do have payment plans available obviously you can pay the whole thing but you can also do that there's no interest rate it's it's fine um yes any other questions or thoughts about the program how about co-opt instead of co-opt i feel like co-opt people will be even more confused about what that means <laughs> purple wow i wonder how you knew about that um thank you for the link to the tribe no worries why do you always have oil on your face i just have oily skin guys i don't know why i have oil on my face ask my mom <laughs> she has oil on her face too um when do we learn of our acceptance or rejection into octopur and you decide to know my 1000 should be go towards a new kidney I would never going to find a $1,800 kidney, but definitely not on the legitimate market. Yes. So apply within the 8th. You It's also on a rolling basis. So you'll have application deadlines on the 8th, but the earlier you apply, the earlier it is that you'll hear back from us as well. So everything, you will definitely hear back from us at least a week prior to the, the, program, uh, the program start. But yeah, the sooner you apply, to the, the sooner you'll hear back from us as well. Uh, we will send out, like, we won't just ghost you. So even if you are rejected, we will let you know at least a week prior to, to the program start. Yes. Um, hours per week. Great question. We have an FAQ for that. Yes. What is the time commitment? Okay. So I would say two hours per week is going to be, like, the minimum, minimum requirement. Is it... Yes, let me zoom in on this a little bit more. So yeah, two hours per week is going to be the minimum, minimum. Like if you don't do two hours per week, then I don't think you should do this program because you're not going to get that much out of it. Um, so generally it is really flexible though. So for example, some weeks you might do six hours, some weeks, some weeks you might do like one hour. So that's why there's that customized study plan option. And it's also designed to be paced differently so it's not like you have to do it at the exact same time or anything like that uh, but yeah, i would say that's the absolute minimum i think if you don't know any coding like you don't have anything at all and you want to do like a very like a project that's very fleshed out for your company project i would say four weeks uh, four hours per week to six hours per week you would get the most out of this program yes um also it's totally fine if you can't commit like 10 hours 20 hours like first of all it's not designed to do that but even if you're committing less time per week as long as you meet the minimum requirements um everything all the projects and things afterwards right you you get that you get lifetime access to everything um the only thing is for the company project that two-week period in which you're working on that project i think if you can't commit to doing that the program is not really worth it for you because i think that's one of the key highlights of this program um is there an age limit we've actually had people all the way from 16 up to 50 years old so there's no age limit but i think if you're not in high school yet probably not a great choice because most people are be around that age i would say the average i don't think we actually calculate the exact average i would say in the 20s 27 or 28 i think is the average maybe like 30 something like that so there's a there's honestly like big range of age age is just a number um 
I see that there is technology related content, but do you know if there's anything specifically related to bioinformatics or ecology or am I asking about things that are very niche? That's a great question. So um, I really like this circle thing that we drew. So I'm gonna show you again, the circle thing that we drew, same. So in the very beginning of Lonely Octopus, we focused a lot on pure coding um, based stuff, like very, very technical stuff. So starting from this cohort and then moving forward, we're also going to be a lot more like we're going to be having a greater selection and a greater spectrum because there's so many tools out there now um, that are not necessarily like really, really full on building AI products on very, very technical stuff. So we cover a, a lot of different companies like the company projects you're working on they come from a lot of different backgrounds and then also the specific courses as well they're going to be coming from different um th there's going to be a more diverse range of courses like if you're interested in video you'll be doing video right and then the company you're working for uh working at doing the project at whatever you want to call it is for example like your move.ai is an example of something that is pretty interesting and it's not building a technical product it's a dating coach um so the team they created an ai generated social media content and journalism pieces so how do you use ai in order to write stuff uh so the example that i showed earlier for anybody that was there uh when i was showing you how to like write things like those are just things that you would be applying within this project uh, another part was was automating the content generation process for the company that's a little bit more technical so those are, and Stratascratch, for example, is for coding and then economic development consultancy, LISCAP. So this is things with economics, agriculture. They have a very diverse range of projects that they work on. Last Mile is a lot more technical. We've also done stuff with health clinics that is more on the side of bioinformatics as well as, let's call it health tech, health tech things like that so the companies themselves are quite diverse and that's also why the skills that we teach now is also there's a lot of diversity in that as well yes for the can this work for someone who is employed full-time great question the majority of people who do this program are actually employed first time uh, are employed full-time so that's why we make the schedule personalized for the study plan and then also for time commitment we do it in such a way that's not like you have to exactly be here at an exact time because people have other things that they're doing in life so most people here are actually working full-time while doing this program oh wow thank you frank the first super on it let's celebrate their first super on a live stream this is actually the first is this super sticker super chat I, I literally never received one before thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much for supporting this channel that's cute wow i didn't know is, is this like a super chat like a super oh my god <laughs> well thank you i appreciate it oh sick shop thank you as well thank you so much for supporting this channel i really appreciate it i really appreciate that you guys also appreciate these live streams Mm. other questions how many people do you take so we it's not like we exactly take a certain amount we take the people who we think are most qualified and our limit is usually around like 30 to 40 people um so that we make sure everybody has a very good experience are there any group projects we're all solo project great question as well all the learning projects like the ones that don't have like an actual end client there can be learning projects they're um Actually, yeah, no, just for all the projects in general, they can be solo projects and they can be groups projects. For the company projects specifically, we really recommend people to do it in groups because you can get a lot more done with that. And then what you end up accomplishing, what you can, uh, what you get your referral about, your front reference letters and what you put on your resume is also a lot, uh, a lot more fleshed out from that as well. And also just working with other people, I think makes life more fun. So yeah, we highly encourage group projects, even though if you really want to do a solo, you can do that as well. Um, which laptop would you recommend to do AI such ML programming? Honestly, most laptops are able to handle this now, whether you do like PCs uh, or you can use a Mac. I think a lot of things now, like it's, it used to be a lot higher requirements, but not as much now, especially because a lot of things are on the cloud, like virtual machines, you can also spin up those as well. So I don't think there's a lot of requirement as much for the laptop. Anything that is 
relatively good and is sold in places <laughs> should be fine um Okay, I'm a biologist. I've been through a full stack Python bootcamp, a data analyst course, and now I'm finishing a data science course. But I would like to continue clinging to my training as a biologist. I see that's the thing. I don't know why you shouldn't do that. Like if you already have experience as a certain like in a certain field, like biology, right? You're a biologist. I think it's a lot better to actually incorporate that into like AI into that skill set. Combine those together and then you are so much more unique and you're able to do things that other people can't do. Like if you're not a biologist and you only know AI and ML stuff, um, you wouldn't be able to do as much because you don't have that domain knowledge, right? And you also stand out among biologists because most of, most of them do not know how to do the AI and ML stuff, especially in the healthcare and education. Um, healthcare education sustainability from all the reports that are coming out uh those are the places where there's the most growth and the most potential for ai as well um so like even with the projects that we have here as you can see like the freelance freelance project com real company projects work experience from projects um all of these companies they're very different like this is a dating coach this is a um economic development consultancy that does a lot of like um, agriculture based stuff like these are companies that if you have domain knowledge in certain things and you're able to add on to that company you're actually you can add so much value from doing that so I don't think people should just be like oh like I need to abandon everything that I knew from before learn the AI skills and apply it to your domain that will make you stand out oh Dave thank you so much 9.99 thank you oh my god thank you guys so much like I literally this this is like making my day <laughs> <laughs> this is making my day. Thank you for supporting this channel. I feel so appreciated in doing these live streams. Thank you. <laughs> no, really, I'm like genuinely. I'm. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. Um, do we choose which company for whom we do the co-opt for the real company? Yeah, you do. You get to choose. Uh, we we label it by levels. So if you're and like by interest like what you're interested in so you get like a brief about what the project is on and you can choose the one that you're most interested in um they go from technical ranging from pretty relatively non-technical all the way to very very technical so and different domains obviously like if you're a beginner you probably shouldn't go do like the hardest project <laughs> we will tell you that but you do get to choose um oh my god guys thank you so much i literally i'm like i don't even know what to say i just feel so appreciated like people have not done this before <laughs> tina you're my go-to on ai thank you thank you paul oh my god thank you so much i'm like blushing right now um kajwin kai kaijwin kaijwin thank you so much as well oh i really appreciate it seems like i should do keep doing these live streams huh and keep making content Sometimes, you know, like sometimes when you create content and you just put it out there, I'm literally getting emotional right now. Sometimes you just like do that and then you're like, I hope people find this useful because I put in so much work to do this content and do these live streams and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I just want to say like I feel so appreciated that you, this matters to you guys. Okay, I'm like literally getting emotional. Um, thank you so much. Okay, let me answer a few more questions. Uh, it's a lot of questions. Age limit? No, there's no age limit. Don't worry. Is it live weekly classes? Okay, Nicole. Um, it's gonna be courses, so it's gonna be pre-recorded courses. But there's live weekly tutorial sessions and different talks that are gonna be there, and then also the accountability groups when you're checking in with your different people, uh, with different people in your group. That's gonna be live. So it's a combination of different things. Um. Oh, also recordings are available for everything as well because different time zones. Sometimes you can't make it. Let's see. Intern is still very standard industry and gov agencies. Yeah, that word, right? Intern. I think what I'm going to do is just like test out these different terms and just like see what people resonate with because I just like don't know what to call this. 
yeah i okay i think it should be called either internship experience or should be called company like real company experience internship in the sense that you'll be interning at that company but it's less traditional in the sense that you we like as lonely octopus we support you throughout that process and we coordinate between everybody so there's like slight difference but internship is a good thing and it shows up on your resume as that as well uh real company experience that's kind of general enough to describe what it is so that's kind of where we got that from thank you so much by the way for anybody that has helped me come up with the names for it that's from the polls and stuff that's what came up the most as the top two so i really appreciate you helping me find a name for what to call these projects at the end co-op was also really good program practicum i really like those two as well but i asked people and a lot of them didn't know what that meant so that's why we didn't use like co-op and practicum in the end deha you bring a lot of value educating us about a and opportunities in the field thank you so much thank you all so much like you guys are literally like just making my day right now i just i don't think I've actually ever felt this appreciated <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I really, I just feel so appreciated. I know like you watch my videos and things, but just from a live stream, like that I'm interacting with you guys and yeah, thank you. Um, Joshua, hi Tina, I'm a software QA manager, but would like to transition to be a data analyst or a data scientist. Would AI or ML qualification such projects increase my chances? um software qa manager so i'm assuming you're pretty technical right like in terms of the coding side of things in terms of the engineering side would you say that you're relatively comfortable with that so more on the data side right data and data scientist side of things so i would say in your in your case uh let me know if that's not the correct assumption but um in your case if i think uh, I think what I would recommend, um, if you were part of Lonely Octopus, what I would actually recommend is that I would say AI and ML, yes, it would increase your qualification, but I would also do like the less sexy stuff. Um, how do you do data analytics, for example? So courses on that, how to um, actually dive into machine learning, in, not just in terms of usage of machine learning, but learning how these algorithms work. Um, and then more traditional data scientist based stuff as well, statistics. I'm going to say like, I really recommend learning statistics. It's really important if you're doing anything data related. Uh, what else? Data visualization. So these are more like traditional data skills, uh, which I think you should very much have a good foundation in if you don't already and then you should also use like machine learning and ai especially if you have a software background um the usage of that shouldn't be a problem but it that in combination will be very powerful uh, there's the thing like i think for a lot of data roles right now there is a much more requirement for software engineering because of these ai and ml models that are coming out um, but at the same time for those that are in engineering there's also more demand on the data side too because what's fueling these models is data so for people in engineering go learn data stuff people in in, in data go learn engineering stuff is what i would say uh i code etc okay yes in that case that's what i would recommend like call it like more traditional um data science, data analyst stuff, and actually know how machine learning algorithms work as opposed to just knowing how to use them. If you were just saying, I want to be like an engineer, I don't think you need to do that. But if you actually want to go on the data side, then yes, I do think you need to do that. Um, Kaijuan, thank you again for supporting the channel. Working on a prerequisite for grad school for CS, Calc 2, Discrete Math, C++, Buzz, is that business undergrad? Business undergrad, would you recommend Lonely Octopus now or later? prerequisites for grad school are you working right now are you yeah are you working right now in business or something like that that's actually really similar to me because i came from a pharmacology background um i knew how to code i kind of like taught myself and took a couple courses on it but then i went to cs for grad school so yeah my question is are you working right now are you learning on these things by yourself or yeah i think the major question is how are you learning these things right now? I will. I can answer that question better. Um, Mr. Ellie Eli Seraphin, thank you so much. Hiya, hiya back. Thank you, Jace. You are appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. I just feel so appreciated right now. Oh my god, I feel so appreciated. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Watch video four hours is enough to be code programmer. I don't know about that. I would disagree with that. 
Uh, yes, I am technical. Yeah, I hope that was helpful. Kaijuin, did you say something? Did I miss it? I hope I didn't miss it. Yes, full time work in hospitality. Okay, got it. And are you just learning the prerequisites and things by yourself right now? Like, are you learning that like on Coursera or or something like that? Taking classes through local universities. Okay, got it, got it. Hmm, okay. So this is what I would say in terms of grad school in computer science. Working on prerequisites. So you're doing the, you're probably working and then you're trying to do courses on the side as well. So in terms of your time dedication, um, there's probably, you don't have that as much time, right? I would say like in terms of maximum bandwidth, are you would you say you're probably at your limit so this is what i would say okay if you feel like you're at your limit because you're like both working full-time and my understanding hospitality is not an easy industry to be in so i'm assuming you're working a lot of hours right now and you're taking courses from universities if you feel like all of that is taking a significant amount of your time i wouldn't recommend lonely octopus right now um if you want to keep taking those university courses yeah, I wouldn't recommend Lonely Octopus. If you're saying like you're like met about the courses that you're taking right now and it's kind of just like in and out, um, not like, you know, not like part of a program, then I would say drop those courses and then do Lonely Octopus um, and focus only on the software engineering part. But honestly, in most, I personally think like this is like me not kind of like advertising myself. I think in your case, I don't think you should be doing Lonely Octopus until you're in um grad school until after given what you just told me i think if you're doing university courses you're doing that already just stick with doing that right now and get into grad school first if that makes sense if you're fine learning these courses and you and everything is going great just do that and then potentially when you're ready to get a job uh where you want more experience in the ai side as opposed to fundamental computer science then you can do lonely octopus later taking classes as well yes through ucla extension okay it definitely in this case i do know ucla extension so i wasn't sure if you were doing like random not random but like courses from different places that were not particularly reputable for example but ucla extension of courses are obviously going to be great the professors there are obviously going to be great as well so i think you should not do lonely octopus now stick with that get all the get all your prerequisites um make those connections with those universities and get into grad school first best of luck by the way report back okay thank you you're welcome i am currently a second year software engineering student i'm doing data structures and principles of software i did object oriented and web programming last class the previous term what is the question <laughs> sorry did i miss it what is the question in that statement do you take in absolute beginners yes a lot of people we've taken in um have literally never coded in their lives uh so we do take absolute beginners i would say are you going to be building the best like the most fancy advanced work experience project from that company um no you will not be doing that but our levels of the different um like we span a lot of different levels for the company projects as well uh, in your case, I would say like learn the fundamentals of coding, uh, learn the fundamentals of data, and then do a do a project uh, with a company that is related to analytics, specifically data visualization, analytics, maybe some dashboarding is what I would say is good. Uh, I think we can you would learn a little bit on the prompt engineering side and how to use AI, but I don't think you're ready to be building these projects. Since you have access to all the courses afterwards, I think you should learn those courses and then start building products after. But I don't think that would be, yeah, I think those are the things you should be focusing on throughout the program if you choose to take it. Um, Let's see. Tina, what is your impression of the job market for data analysts slash data scientists for the first half of 2024, particularly for career trans transitioners like myself? I think if you're trying to go for full-time right now, um, unless you're going for more specialized roles, like for example, say you're a biologist and you're learning data stuff, um, 
and AI stuff and you're going for something in health tech um, and you're going something for data analytics, bioinformatics, I think that is very good, especially in industry like healthcare. Um, I think if you're going in generally with no background in any other thing and you're just applying like generally for data analysts and data scientists roles in tech, I don't think it's a great market right now. Um, if you're a freelancer, there's like roles that you can do for that. But I mean, the golden age of tech, I feel like is over. Like back when I was back in my day, um, but this was like a couple years back, like it was very like there was a lot of openings for just data analysts or data science roles within large tech companies that you can go to. And they don't really it's not like specialized. You kind of just go in and then you learn on a job. So they're more kind of generalized, right? As, as long as they think you're smart and you have the ability to learn and you have the skill set, they would take you. But nowadays, unfortunately, I think um, it's a lot harder to do that. I think you need to be able to have very specific skill set, um, domain knowledge if possible. And if you know your AI and ML stuff, that's going to be what makes you stand out, if that helps. And if you're a career transitioner, I always recommend this. Like, If you're already working at a company, try to just find rules with, within your company um, that you can apply these data skills, these ML skills, these AI skills too, and then get yourself there first before jumping out, especially in this kind of climate. I don't think you should just like yolo <laughs> yolo yourself out um yes um let's see any other questions from your experience at meta what would your recommendations be for a product manager learning ai slash ml what does a pm need to know to work slash speak to develop an engineer's background in molecular biology hey we have kind of similar backgrounds pharmacology i'd take molecular biology in school a couple classes at least um okay <clears throat> where are you a product manager at like what's your are you working at a tech company are you working at something else just out of curiosity uh but in general like what does a pm need to know to work such speak to develop an engine work such speak to develop an engineers wait wait know to work speak to okay what you should know to work such speak to developers and engineers okay so you want to be able to be a product manager for engineers and developers is my understanding like probably people working on AI and ML stuff. Yes. Okay. Um, I think for a PM, so I'm thinking back to my experience at Meta, right? The best product managers I've had. Um, let me think. Okay. I think the best product managers I have had have had some technical experience themselves. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that if you don't have technical experience, you would be a bad product manager, but most of them have technical experience either through school where they tried very hard themselves to go learn about more of the technical side. Because if they do that, first of all, you're honestly like you'll be respected more <clears throat> in general. You'll be respected more by your developers if you have some sort of technical knowledge and then it would also just be easier because working with someone who's completely non-technical they would be like oh like can't you do this in three days and as an engineer you're kind of just like no i can't do that in three days uh, where they don't understand the product development cycle and you know feature requests like things like that um would be harder i think what i would do if i wasn't technical at all is at the very minimum i would take like um introductory computer science courses like cs courses and then i would just um learn the concepts of things right <clears throat> you don't need to go develop an ai product but what are the components of a product right like software engineering product in general what are the components like what's a database how does that relate to ai like how are people using ai these days they're using different apis are they fine-tuning their models like these kind of concepts and terminologies i think is very important um so you have an understanding of what the infrastructure like what it is that people are using these days to talk to them about it um yeah i personally think if you unless you're like very opposed to it i think learning how to code and just at least taking like a couple introductory courses is is very helpful for you yeah that's what i would say mm. 
AI group hug. Oh. AI group hug. <laughs> I'm cursed with being a generalist. A little knowledge of a lot of things. I understand that. I understand that. I, I it's called a Renaissance soul. I would say, okay, as someone who also is more of a generalist person, learning to code was probably the smartest thing I've ever done. Also, starting YouTube, the smartest thing I've ever done as well. <laughs> We're really learning how to code because as a generalist, like if you know how to code, you, it's actually great for being a generalist because you're like, you can code whatever it is you want, right? Like maybe today you're going to be coding something in bioinformatics and then the next day you're like, oh, like I don't want to do that anymore because I'm bored. You can go do that in finance. Um, Having a technical degree, like, and being able to learn how to do that, it also helps you adapt a lot quicker. Like, new technologies that are coming out right now, if you don't know how to code, it's very hard to keep up. But if you know how to code, you can use that and apply that in so many different ways. Um, for example, if you are technical, learning how to use APIs, like learning how to use these large language models um, and different AI models that are coming out is so much easier than if you don't know how to use it. Really, a lot of things, if you understand the technical aspect, it's really not that hard to learn new technologies. So I think I understand that. I think the more generalist you are, the more like you don't know what to do with your life, the more it is I would recommend you learn how to code. <laughs> um. Is it best to enroll in Lonely Octopus when I am not doing university course, such as during the summer? We've had people do both. I actually personally would recommend doing it um, not just straight up. I mean, you could. We've had people do both. But I don't think... Okay, let me rephrase. I don't think you need to wait until summer to do these courses. Unless, unless you feel like you're already dying, then, you know, probably don't do that. If you're at, like... If you're at like capacity already, I don't think you should. Um, I don't think it's necessarily. Um, I don't. I don't think you necessarily have to wait until summer. Um, we do have a summer cohort though, so just kind of putting that out there. If you can't make this one, totally fine. We do have a summer cohort. Um, but kind of just think about. I think it's more about in terms of your limit, how much it is that you can do now, um, and then also, yeah, like how much of it can you do now, in addition to the courses, and you can kind of like do it more self-paced. Um, or you can in summer just be like i'm gonna dedicate myself and just learn all the things and then do the do the uh, company project internship afterwards that works as well me personally i actually prefer to do it while i'm doing courses like while i'm working or while i'm doing that because i tend to procrastinate <laughs> when i don't have other dedications like if i was like oh i have the whole like two months free and I will have every intention to work on it. And Lonely Octopus does a good job of keeping you accountable for that. But I tend to procrastinate a lot more when I don't have dedications, if that makes any sense. Kind of counterintuitive, but that's me personally. So I think you just have to assess that for yourself. Um, both work. We've had people do both before and they, we do have a summer cohort as well. So I'm sorry if that was not very helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, that's not very helpful. All right, I'm going to go soon. Let me see if there's any additional questions that I think have not have very specific um, before I bounce. Octopods have three parts. Yes. Um, abstract cats official. Over the last few years, almost 57 getting serious about getting a tech job now. You got this. Really. You really got this. Thanks for all the great videos. Thank you for thank you for coming. Um, how to begin as a millionaire? What? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just like going through these, and I don't have the context for a lot of these questions. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? Uh, let's see, man. How much mentorship? How much mentorship slash expert interaction do we get with the explorer tier great question so for the explorer tier you have a facilitator so every week when you're joining your the rest of your octopod like the group of people you're working with there's going to be a facilitator a mentor who will be facilitating that session um you'll be interact with people like you can reach out anytime by the way like if you're like um i don't want to change my study plan we're like i don't i want to discuss this you can reach out to us at any point and we will respond and we will help you out in that um you can ask questions on Discord, so we can help you out with that as well. Doing the projects, like the company projects especially, um, we'll, we will be, like, you'll be interacting with us quite a lot, and there'll be office hours um, 
that you can that you'll be interacting with us because we want to make sure that obviously the proposals that you come up with is good for whatever it is that the project is going to be on so that's going to be like a guided process so it, it is quite a lot of interaction and obviously for the weekly live streams and tutorials if you're there you'll be interacting with us as well so i would say so the it's definitely explore option is not going to be one-on-one -on -one. Uh, we will reach like you can contact us one-on-one -on -one, but it's not going to be like we will have a call with you every single day or like anything like that right we won't have like one-on-one -on -one calls with you um but if you have anything specific you want to talk about we will always be there to support that and if there's any and you'll be part of like group sessions like pretty small group sessions as well especially when it comes to the project time it will be you'll be having a lot of interaction from us all right Thank you for your time okay i hope that was helpful um for everybody and i hope that for anybody that's interested in lonely octopus applications are open right now so i recommend that you apply sooner as opposed to later because we go on a rolling basis i haven't actually made my socials announcements on my socials yet so y'all heard it earlier than everybody else i actually said it like two weeks ago when i was um when i when we didn't even open up applications yet but yeah so apply earlier if you're interested um, in doing this. If you have any questions, you can reach out as well. So it's contact at lonelyoctopus.com and we will get back to you. Uh, I hope this was helpful in deciding if this was a useful program for you or not. And hopefully I will see many of you guys um, within the program. And also see you guys in the next live stream. All right. Thank you, friends. Thank you all so much for joining. Also, thank you so much for, for all the super, is it called like super, the stickers, the chats? super chats I like sorry I, I literally don't even know what it's called um is it called like super chat super chat stickers but donations like thank you so much for that um genuinely it literally made my day so much I had never uh, it's it's just I haven't felt this appreciated before I think ever um on a live stream or just on video content just appreciate y'all so much appreciate so much for doing this i feel yeah i feel so appreciated okay all right thank you all so much again and i'll see you guys next week goodbye wow